Today's scripture is from Acts 2, 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and were bewildered, because each of them heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that, they, that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and my, my sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. First of all, I want to uh, thank uh, Jennifer Larson for, I think I'm on here, maybe, yeah, hello, there we go, better. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Jennifer Larson for filling in Sunday. Um, she did a great job. I was watching on live stream, so that's the kind of fun thing. You think, you know, I can watch and see who's playing hooky and who isn't here. And who really is here, and, uh, you know, even though I was kind of playing hooky too, I guess, but uh, uh, anyway, it was, thank Jennifer for her sharing of God's word last week. Uh, also, it's a season, isn't it? The season of uh, graduations and weddings and family of gatherings and events, and uh, those are all, all very rich uh, and celebrations that uh, we are mindful of, and so uh, as we think about People uh, experiencing those special moments, may we lift them up in prayer uh, this day. Let us pray. God, today we remember the powerful moment of when your spirit was poured out on 120 individuals. Directly tied to your son Jesus. That powerful moment has spread the, the good news of your saving grace and love for all people around the world. Remind us today, help us to understand. The movement of your spirit as the Holy Spirit. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The day of Pentecost, for me, is a day of a cause and effect. Now, when you think about a cause and effect, it's, it's usually in two areas. One is in science, the cause and effect, or it's also in writing. 
So the cause is why something happens, and the effect is what truly happens. And thus, as we prepare and share together today on this day of Pentecost, I want us to think about the cause and effect of the God, power of God's Spirit that comes into our hearts and lives. Now, I don't know how long, uh, I've been meeting with confirmation students individually before they're confirmed. Uh, usually I meet with them for about 10 or 15 minutes. It's usually a pretty scary time for them. You know, here they're coming to the principal's office. It's that kind of feel to it. And I try to relax them and say, you know, I'm just wanting to find out, you know, where you are with your relationship with God. And so I ask questions around God and about Jesus, talk about what does it mean to be a part of the church and what does it mean to be a Methodist. And invariably, when I say the word Holy Spirit, there's this pause. It's kind of like, well, I really don't know what that is. You know, we're pretty good about talking about God, and we're pretty good, very good about talking about Jesus. But in the midst of the Trinitarian understanding of God that we as Christians adopt and believe, we don't do much with the Holy Spirit. Because I think sometimes we think, well, it's this... Uh, phenomenon. It's this strange part of God that we really don't completely understand. So today my, I'm thinking that we should think a little bit more about who is the Holy Spirit, why the Holy Spirit, and what happens in the midst of understanding the Holy Spirit. So that, you know, when the pastor asks you that question, you know, like the confirmation kids, so tell me about the Holy Spirit. Hopefully you'll know the answer. Hopefully you'll know the answer. For me in this passage today, there's three movements of the Spirit. The first movement is described in those first verses of how powerfully the Spirit of God poured out on 120 people. Now we have to kind of back up a little bit. In chapter 1, Jesus has resurrected from the dead. And he has been with the disciples for 40 days. And he's telling them in this 40 days that, that he will be ascended back and united with God. And that God will send the Holy Spirit. It's supposed, so the disciples are supposed to wait in Jerusalem. They're supposed to wait until this rushing of God's Spirit would come upon them. So they're to wait. Now they're not sure what this Holy Spirit is either. And yet they, they, they take Jesus' promise and they, they wait in Jerusalem in a room, an upper room. And they're sharing in prayer and worship and eating together. And then it happened. It describes it like the rush of a mighty wind that comes over all of them as of tongues of fire. In the midst of their waiting, the power of God's presence overwhelms them and comes into their midst. In a very dramatic way. Now when we think about the Holy Spirit, Nathaniel Hawthorne once wrote, happiness is like a butterfly. Pursue it, and it will always be on your grasp. Sit down quietly and wait for it, and it's likely to land right on your shoulder. Happiness is like a butterfly. Pursue it, and it will always be beyond your grasp. Sit down quietly and wait for it, and it's likely to land right on your shoulder. For me, the first movement of God's Holy Spirit is this overwhelming presence of God that comes into our hearts and lives. It did for the 120 that day. It came as a rush of the mighty wind and it was tongues of fire and they began to speak in a variety of languages. So thus the first piece I think for us to understand the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit is God's overwhelming 
powerful presence in our lives. Hasn't that happened to you? When I think through my life, there are moments when I have just been overwhelmed by the powerful presence of God. I remember Christmas Eve. My sister and I got Bibles from our parents at the Christmas Eve children's program. They were handed to us. It was kind of an overwhelming moment. I remember as a sophomore sitting in a car in a cemetery funeral line, sensing an overwhelming presence of God's peace in the midst of death. I remember when my children were born, an overwhelming, powerful presence of God's undeserved grace in my life. I've seen it and experienced it in a disciple Bible study group. When we're having a conversation and all of a sudden everybody in the room, it's just like an overwhelming presence of God's Spirit. I've had it happen when I'm driving my car on a long trip. And believe it or not, it even happened once when I was mowing the lawn. Probably more so than anything else. You just never know. But we know it, don't we? We've experienced those moments in our lives when God the Holy Spirit dramatically just overwhelms us with God's presence. I pray that you would think about that in your life today. Where have been those moments of God's powerful Holy Spirit? And that's the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, God will send the Holy Spirit to teach you and help each of us to remember the power of Jesus when he lived on this earth. The second movement, I think, happens out of this passage when all of a sudden they begin to speak in all these different languages. It's incredible to the people in Jerusalem of that day And I know Carrie had to read all of those. You know, one of the most uh, difficult things in reading the scriptures is saying all those different places, you know. But all those different places are representing the whole world. So God's Holy Spirit gives us a language of how to talk about God. How we can talk about God. Because so often in that overwhelming moment of God's presence in our lives, it's like, how do we talk about it how do I explain it oftentimes we might even break out in song or like that butterfly that rests on us quietly but we have to have a language to speak about God and so the Holy Spirit is that part of God that comes to help us speak about God to share our faith, to tell God's story through our lives to others. The Holy Spirit is this movement of God's Spirit, that indwelling power of God that lives within us, but also gives us a language, a voice, to not only sing praise to God, but to share the story of God that we have. A North Carolina judge recently declared that broken English is a language. It happened in a hospital ER room. A Vietnamese woman who had been here for, as an immigrant for three to four years. Obviously, Vietnamese was her first language, but she was beginning to learn English, even though it was somewhat broken. As she was sitting in this ER, there was a a Hispanic woman who obviously her first language was Spanish, and she was trying to explain to this nurse why she was there, the medical need that she had. And this Vietnamese woman overheard her, and she knew she was speaking Spanish, and she didn't understand that, but every once in a while, she would use an English word that this Vietnamese woman knew. And so... She goes over to the nurse and basically interprets this broken English 
to, do, to relay to the nurse what this Hispanic woman's need was. She did it in such a great way that the nurse said, could you just stay? And so this Vietnamese woman was helping this nurse all day long with these people who were speaking different languages. In essence, broken English. The hospital went on to hire her because they said she's an expert in broken English. The power of the Holy Spirit today is that the power of God's language comes in various and many ways. It's just not in English alone. Because in each of the Spirit, we hear in that scripture today, they heard themselves, their language, the power of God's presence in everyone's language. God gives us a voice, a language. The Holy Spirit gives us that voice. And lastly, the movement of the Spirit in this scripture ends with Peter getting up and declaring to the people, you know, we're not drunk. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the power of God that has been promised by Jesus that comes among each of us. This overwhelming, powerful gift of God's Spirit gives us a voice and a language to speak about the salvation of God. He describes a passage from the prophet Joel that talks about how sons and daughters will see visions. And then the passage ends with and everyone will call upon the name of God to be saved now the word salvation is really a, a healing word it's a word of wholeness of how can I experience complete wholeness in my life because we know there's many times in our lives when we're broken or uh, we're out of balance we're out of sorts the power of the Holy Spirit is that spirit that comes into our midst, gives us a voice and language, and makes us whole. Makes us whole. The country of France, not long ago, had a, a vote of the people to say who was the most important son or daughter of France over the whole history of the country. There were many important people in the history of France. And so people all participated. And the one, the one who they recognized as the most important French person of all time was Louis Pasteur, the great scientist. He was of elder age when they announced that, and so he wasn't able to make the speech at the event that celebrated that, but he sent it along with his son, and this is one, this is one sentence that he said in that speech. He said, the future belongs not to the conquerors, but to the saviors of the world. Not to the conquerors, but to the saviors of the world. The overwhelming power of God's presence was poured out on that Pentecost day that gave voice to this truth. It is through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that God's creating spirit came into the midst of the world. God breathed into us the breath of life. And in this time and this place, it is God's Holy Spirit that indwells in our spirits. It is God's Holy Spirit that gives us the language to talk about God in our lives. It is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that allows us to offer salvation to a broken world. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Let us pray.
God, pour out on each of us today. And help us to remember those overwhelming moments of your presence in our lives. Give us the voice, the words of faith. That we may truly experience today your salvation. Your complete wholeness. So that we can speak those words of salvation to people who hurt, to people who are broken. Because you promised to us, O oh Lord, the power of this Holy Spirit will bring comfort, will bring sus sustain us, and will be our advocate to help us remember the power of God's love. O oh Holy Spirit, come and rest on us each this day. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.